This is some video of a PC I recently built. It's going to take you through the basic hardware build of this PC and just give you a general idea of what to expect. I made this video for people who are considering building their own computer and would like to get a general idea of what's involved. Building your own PC can be a very fun, sometimes frustrating experience, but you can take pride in knowing that you built it and you also learned something in the process. And once you build your own PC, more than likely you will never want to buy an off-the-shelf OEM computer again. Ironically, and I didn't realize it until I started putting this video together, my kids are watching a cartoon and it's talking about don't touch the computer. But everything did work out okay. So, here we go. Now I've got here a case, motherboard, CPU, some RAM, a power supply, hard drive, and my optical drive is a DVD burner. Video card will have to be added on later. We're building on a budget here today. But not to worry, this motherboard has built-in video. Before you get started, you want to get your work area ready, unpack everything, be mindful of ESD, which is electrostatic discharge, which can damage the components of the computer. You don't want to wear socks and go dragging across the carpet and touch a new motherboard. That would not be good. So it is highly recommended that you wear a grounding wrist strap while building the PC, even though I'm not actually wearing one. I live on the edge. I'm a rebel, I know. What kind of tools you'll need, basically a couple of screwdrivers, maybe needle nose pliers, good to have on hand, a uh, 40 pound sledgehammer if you get too frustrated, just kidding. And that's it, let's start building it. First thing you want to do is install your I.O. faceplate and you can just get rid of the one that comes with the PC case and use the one that came with your motherboard. You want to take your motherboard and line it up with your I.O. faceplate where everything's going to plug into in the back and then take a look at the board itself and look for the screw holes and see where they're at. Now you're going to put a standoff in the PC case that the motherboard will screw onto. Once you've discovered how many screws you need, you can install the appropriate number of standoffs in the PC case and make sure they're all going to line up properly. Once you're ready to screw the motherboard down, you don't want to start cranking the screws down all the way. You want to get each one started, make sure everything's lined up good, make sure the screw is in the center of the hole there and uh, then start tightening them down. You'll notice a little pressure pushing back from the I.O. faceplate. So you'll have to hold the board with one hand and just keep everything lined up when you finally tighten them down. Next up is the installation of the CPU, heat sink and fan. And I think it goes without saying you want to be very, very careful with the CPU. You don't want to bend any of those pins. It only goes in the motherboard socket a certain way. Look for a little gold triangle on one of the corners and that should match up with a similar triangle on the motherboard socket. So it only goes in there one way. You just lift up the lever. There might be a little dust cover there that's in the socket. You can get rid of that. Install your CPU. Don't force it in the socket. Don't try and push it in there if it doesn't feel like it wants to go. It should almost fall into the socket real easily. Make sure it is pushed down enough though where it's, it's flush with the socket and then you just put your lever back down and then you want to put a little thermal grease on the back of the CPU install your heat sink and fan per the instructions of your CPU or fan manufacturer at this point you can go ahead and install your RAM you can also hook up your case to your motherboard your reset switch your power switch your hard drive light you want to look for a bank of pins on your motherboard and it does matter where you put them and it doesn't matter which direction they're facing. A lot of motherboards will tell you right on the board which one's positive, which one's negative, what goes where, but they don't all do that. You should have some sort of manual or document you can refer to that'll tell you the correct orientation and where each one plugs into. Also, if you've got front USB or front audio, you can go ahead and hook up the USB to the USB headers on your board and your appropriate audio Next, you want to install your optical drive of choice, CD, DVD, Blu-ray, whatever you got. It's a fairly straightforward process, four screws, two on each side. I only like to screw it down on one side in case I need to swap the drive out later. Then I don't have to take both sides of the case off. I can just get at it a lot easier that way. After the optical drive is installed, you can do the hard drive, and that's fairly straightforward as well. Just find an empty bay, install it, screw it down. Once both drives are installed, here I'm using serial ATA cables to attach them to the motherboard. Okay, at this point there's only one thing left and that's the power supply. 
if you plan on eventually getting a, a video card to add to your system, you definitely want to get a power supply that's got a PCIe connection to it because a lot of those video cards want its own connection to the power supply. So better to have and not need than need and not have, definitely. The power supply screws to the case with four screws. You're going to plug in main power to your motherboard and everything else that needs power, your hard drive, your optical drive, any case fans you've got. Now all these different power plugs are keyed, which means they're only going to work one particular direction or orientation, so don't try and jam them or force them in there. They will fit in there. If it doesn't work one way, then simply turn it around and try a different direction. You want to have some zip ties on hand and tie down any loose wires. You don't want them rubbing up against any fans or anywhere where they might overheat or, or block any airflow. And that's about it. If you've stuck with me and watched this video all the way through, I hope it's helped you out some. And as always, thanks for watching.